the Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to Watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. If I sound a little strange to you, I'm testing out a new microphone because I'll be going away for a week and I wanted to be able to keep the show going, but do it as efficiently as possible. So send your comments and let me know how the microphone sounds. In the meantime, Germany, John, I th I'm sure we read a lot of the same articles. Supposedly, if they get no Russian gas this winter, the Ener energy minister there said, it's going to be a, like an existential event. And then uh, where are you going to buy your next car from? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is how dumb the guys in charge of the world are right now. And, you know, Germany never used to be included on that list of, of uh, stupid countries making existentially threatening mistakes, because it always seemed like um, Germany had hardworking people and and they were run by adults. Even if you disagreed with what they um, with what they were doing, it, it was still adult action, you know. But my God, what they, what they did this time! Um, a few years back, they decided to cut deals with Russia for natural gas, uh, which would make Russia a crucial supplier of most of their natural gas. Um, which even Trump tried to talk them out of it. I remember back in the day. Uh, and they, they went ahead and did it anyhow. Now, you know, that that's a policy that can work for you if the gas keeps flowing and it's nice and cheap and very convenient and everything. But at the same time, they made that deal with Russia. Um, via NATO, they antagonized Russia by expanding um, NATO membership right to Russia's borders, even though Russia said, no, this is, this is like an act of war. We need uh, we need defensible borders and you're going to put a hostile military alliance right on our borders. That's not acceptable. And they, you know, Germany and the U.S. and the rest of NATO ignored that until Russia finally broke and invaded Ukraine. And then they um, the West slapped sanctions on Russia, trying to make it impossible for Russia to, to export anything. So Russia naturally is not going to export gas to Germany. So G Germany kind of brought this on itself. And like you said, they're looking at a winter without enough natural gas to heat their houses and things. And they're they're now setting up, I think they call them warming stations or something like that, where they take a, a gymnasium and they put these little cubicles in there with heaters so that if you're freezing to death in your apartment, you can go to this heater and be there for a couple of hours in your cubicle and warm back up before you go back out. And, um, you know, and, and that's just the beginning for Germany because their, their energy is so crucial to their economy that now they're running a trade deficit, which they never ran before. Now, what this means for the whole Eurozone is, is potentially a very big deal because the only reason the Euro was a viable currency with, you know, Italy and Spain and, and Greece and other countries without rock solid finances in the Eurozone um, was because everybody perceived the Euro to basically be a new version of the Deutschmark. In other words, a German currency. And they perceived Japan or um, Italian and Portuguese and Greek debt as being effectively German debt because Germany stood behind those bonds. Well, if Germany is no longer a healthy economy, then there's nothing propping up the Euro, nothing propping up Italian debt or anything. And so you've got chaos over there. And that's why uh, the Euro dropped down to parity with the dollar in the last few weeks. Um, it was quite a bit higher than that. I forget where it, where it peaked, One, you know, 135 or something like that. Uh, now it's one to one. And um, that's a sign that people are losing faith in the euro, which is to say they're losing faith in Germany. And there's no real solution to this un unless um, they take it all back. They take take off the sanctions on Russia and they uh, they try to make peace again with these guys, which, uh, you know, it's not necessarily in Russia's interest to even do that because they're selling their energy, their oil and their gas on the international markets um, at completely acceptable prices. So the, the ruble is up. Um, Russian, uh, the, the Russian economy is running a trade surplus now. Uh, so it's pretty clear that Russia kind of won this thing. And uh, Germany and 
to a lesser extent, the U.S. have lost. Um, and, you know, I guess the, the, the reason I find this remarkable is that Germany was kind of the last country that uh, that seemed to have its act together, you know, that you could totally trust to do um, adult kinds of things. And they blew it, you know, so it, it's not clear who else in the world replaces Germany as the uh, the well-run country. I mean, maybe Switzerland, but that's it. You know, there's no nobody else out there that uh, looks like a logical replacement. So is this a case of uh, go woke and uh, I should say get woke, go broke? Is that what we're looking at here, John? Well, it, it, partially it is because they um, they expanded their use of um, of alternative energy sources and scaled back their nuclear power and, and their coal dramatically. And, you know, that transition is coming, but it has to happen at a, uh, a pace that doesn't leave you exposed to the loss of any one um, energy source or another. And uh, they so they did that, which made them vulnerable. And then they did the other stuff I talked about. Um, so yeah, it's it's in part a go woke, go broke kind of thing. But it, it's beyond that, unless you uh, consider fighting Russia to be a woke activity. You know, if, um, <laughs> if picking on Putin is something that is virtue signaling, um, then, you know, it could be that that was their motivation too. I don't know. I don't know. It's just that they, they basically did this to themselves. That's what's so bizarre about it. None of that had to happen at all. Mm -hmm. This is true. You know, <laughs> it's it just uh, the self-immolation. That's what the West is doing now, including the United States. It's self-immolation. And we're just like, uh, just giving the whole thing up. And, and the results of this uh, will be the world's eating cricket paste instead of, uh, <laughs> instead of New York strip steaks. You know, they want what? you to give up your New York strip steak so you can have crickets. That's what the, uh, if I have to sum up the entire thing of this uh, great reset, it's you're a food eater, you're a waste producer, you know, because you eat so much steak, the, the cows are putting off uh, greenhouse gases, destroying the world. Mind you, uh, the science on this is specious, but that never stopped uh, those people before. And hey, but we talked last time we spoke about the Dutch farmers. They haven't backed off here. They're still going at it and they're getting tear gassed and flash banged and they don't care because they know this is an existential existential battle for them to maintain their farms they're just saying the uh, dutch government and the great resetters want their land you know that's what this seems to be um in, in the same way that uh, the the um, housing bubble in the u.s back in the day was basically uh, kind of sort of engineered so the banks could buy up all the foreclosed houses and and the covid pandemic was basically uh, a business scam so that the uh, uh, the pharmaceutical companies can make hundreds of billions of dollars this kind of looks like something um, along those lines where they they pass a law or a regulation that would put a, a big percentage of uh, Dutch farmers out of business. And uh, should that happen, who do you think is going to buy that land? Well, Bill Gates is going to swoop in and buy a bunch of it and control the world's food supply, of course. So, um, you know, it's understandable that it's uh, it's causing a lot of civil unrest, which is borderline shutting down the country. Um, and, you know, the Netherlands is a fairly significant country, too. So uh, for... Yeah they and Germany for different reasons, but both self-inflicted are kind of shutting down their economies is um, bizarre. It's not, uh, you know, it's not obvious why they're making these decisions because they couldn't be stupid enough to be surprised by the outcome. But um, it, it's also not clear what it is they're after you know, what, what is Germany after doing what they did, you know, because the guys in charge aren't going to survive this. And then, you know, how many Dutch politicians are going to get reelected um, given the uh, importance of agriculture to their economy and the damage they're doing to it? I, I really don't know. It's uh, so, so much of this stuff 
And of course, we can go back to the U.S. and talk about a lot of things that are, like you said, we're self-immolating here too. And it's almost as if um, we're we're trying hard to engineer a massive crisis that will allow us to declare martial law or declare, declare allow the guys in charge to declare martial law, and uh, and basically implement all the stuff they want to implement. And uh, that's. That's a little farther than I want to go, but you can certainly make the case that there's a lot of evidence for this being um, a, a systematic thing where each of these things that seem unique, you know, COVID this and farm regulations that and the Russia thing, you know, they, they all seem like separate things with their own motivations, but they're all leading to the same thing, which is some kind of a gigantic crisis. Um, which will require, not just allow, but require the powers that be uh, to step in and take over. Uh, I don't know. Hey, John, if there's no energy for heat and hot water and cooking in Europe this winter, <laughs> there's going to be a die-off, and a die-off that is completely avoidable and unnecessary uh, to shut down all of Germany's nuclear reactors is an act of madness. Uh, I don't care how much surplus electricity there is, there are always peaks and there are always emergencies. And look, no place has more electrical generation than Texas. And you see what happened to them two winters, uh, the winter before last. Uh, this is pure irresponsibility. It is crazy nuttiness uh, to the nth degree. Uh, I just, uh, and, and it seems to me that the, the world is is catching on to this. The Canadian truckers got it, and they got brutally put down. Uh, all these populations get put down, but now the, all of the farmers in the EU are rebelling and revolting. There's farmers in Italy, I believe in Spain they're uh, starting, and in France. I mean, it's going to be, well, maybe the truck drivers can't save humanity, but the farmers can. Well, Italy's government has already fallen, so they're they're having to pick a new leader, and it's not clear how they're going to do it. And uh, France tried to impose um, a vaccine passport, and uh, the the government got voted down by the opposition parties resoundingly. So it's not clear that France even really has a government anymore. So you know we're already seeing. Um, political chaos resulting from a lot of these really uh, strangely aggressive policies from these governments. Um, and see, you, you know, you could leave all of this stuff aside that we just talked about, and Europe would still be on the edge of a gigantic financial crisis because inflation is ramping up there. And uh, the European Central Bank has to tighten in the face of that inflation. They have no choice it, since inflation is like double digits for those guys, you know, eight or nine or 10%. Um, but raising interest rates in the Eurozone would blow up the Italian and Spanish and Greek economies. So what the, what the European Central Bank is gonna do now is they're going to buy German bonds, or I'm sorry, they're gonna sell German bonds, which will push up interest rates for German debt. And they're going to use that money to continue to buy Italian and Spanish bonds to keep interest rates low for the countries that will completely implode if their interest rates go up. And that makes no sense. You know, that's still unlimited easing because they're going to have to um, they're going to have to buy more Italian bonds than they're going to sell German bonds. So they're they're not actually tightening after all. I don't know. Uh, so much of this stuff makes no sense. Um, either financially or politically, uh, and yet they're doing it. And uh, it all points in one direction. All these different mistakes with seemingly unrelated thought logic trains um, are all heading towards some kind of a gigantic crisis coming soon. And you're right, it could be this winter, because <laughs> if, if literally, if they can't heat their houses in the winter, what is going to happen to Europe? Oh, it's madness. They'll be chopping down a lot of trees. You know, now they're going back and they're they're like uh, looking at uh, burning coal again, right? Um, oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to recommission their nuclear plants and they're trying to um, restart their coal plants. But you, you can't just flip a switch for things like this. I don't think you can do that by winter. 
you know, you can do that as part of a long-term plan to shift um, energy sources back towards traditional fossil fuels, but uh, I, it's not going to happen right away. Um, I don't know how long it takes to uh, open a nuclear plant up after you've closed it, but I think it's quite a while. <laughs> Some, it's very possible it could be never, depends yeah, well, you, how far the decommissioning process has, uh, has progressed. And, you know, like, you can't make this stuff up, John. This is complete no, it's, madness. Here. It's, it's really shocking. And I don't know how much time we have, but um, Japan and China are making equally dramatic mistakes. So these are the major countries out there. You know, it's not, um, oh, Banana Republic periphery countries are blowing up, but that's okay. It's not going to make it to the core. You know, these are the core countries of the global economy. And they're making astoundingly um dangerous mistakes right now and it's it's people really not die. clear how any of them are fixed well people dangerous mistakes where potentially people are going to die from this john uh, there could be look when remember when they had these really bad heat waves in europe in the summers and like 10 15 25 000 people die because they don't have ac uh because their air conditioning kind of sucks compared to the United States, uh, where we <laughs> we're air conditioning republic. Uh, you know, they've in France and all these places where it doesn't really get that hot, where they could get by when they had a really bad heat wave that was like 100 degrees Fahrenheit, all these elderly people died. So maybe that's their game here. And not that people are going to die. But, uh, you know, maybe this is how you get rid of those uh, food eaters, you know? Carrie, they're, they're already having a heat wave over there where it's over 100 degrees in a lot of European countries. Yes. And uh, now th this is kind of an aside, but there's a, a kind of a funny Twitter thread out there now where people were complaining about um, the, the metric system for temperatures or the Celsius system, yeah. where uh, it was, was going to be 40 degrees in, um, in Great Britain and people were saying, well, 40 degrees doesn't sound scary. We need a new measurement. So when a number is bad, it looks bad. You know? <laughs> but 40 degrees is 100 degrees well, Fahrenheit, you know 40 degrees Celsius. Out. Yeah. You know I figure it out because 28 degrees Celsius is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And from there, it gets really hot with the higher yeah. it goes. So you get 40 degrees, it's like 100. Um, but with Google, you know, even if you're illiterate, you could still look up the Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit <laughs> conversion and you type the number in and it'll it'll tell you so you can be adequately but that, scared. That's too much work for the guys on Twitter. They just want to see a scary number so they know what to think. But um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, a lot of people in, in Britain do not have air conditioning because you never need it there, you know. And uh, 105 degrees is actually life threatening for a lot of them, apparently. So, yeah like Vancouver, a lot of places don't have AC there. And you know, it's in the 70s and has no humidity, except for those few hot days, where it really, really gets hot. And but hey, well, I guess we are done for today. But uh, you know, this is an example of uh, play stupid games and win stupid prizes And Germany it looks like it has taken the prize here. We'll just have to see what happens, but you should go over to John's site, dollarcollapse.com, see what he's doing on there these days. Subscribe to his and ours, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Get your free newsletters. John, we'll talk to you again in a couple of weeks. All right. Thanks, Gary. See ya.